Hi, I'm Simon Pegg, and this is the GQ Action Replay, and this is the vinyl throwing sequence from Shaun of the Dead. Hey! I should remember the, the first day that Mark walked onto set, Mark the Big Zombie Hulk, we called him, uh, walked onto set with his sort of uh, missing mouth and teeth showing and just feeling I'm like a million dollars. Uh, it was, uh, you know, our first proper zombie. And um, he just looks so cool. Go for the head. <clears throat> These are all foam props, every single one of them, even the tins. Uh, there was no, um, no zombies were actually harmed in the making of this film. You'll hear a lot of Edgar Wright's uh, signature um, sw swooping noises in this scene, um, which he got from years of watching Jackie Chan movies. Well, now what? We'll have to get more stuff. What's in the shed? I don't know, it's locked. Why is it locked? It's always been locked. Well, you know, we're gonna... Oh. No, no, that's the second half I ever bought! No! That was Crucial Electro, that album, which features the night before when uh, they're dancing. And um, I think that was actually Crucial Electro that we threw. Not, it's not Crucial Electro that embedded itself in Mark's face. But uh, yeah, that was one that we wanted because Sean was a DJ and played, played a lot of old school sort of uh, electro and hip hop. And, uh, and that was one that Edgar and I both had. Some of these are limited. What, 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 what was that? Um, I think it was Blue Monday. Yeah, there was the original press I actually m met up with um, uh, Bernard Sumner and Peter Hook after this at the NME Awards a few years later, and they were ever so pleased that we'd thrown Blue Monday, um, which is obviously an absolute classic 12 inch. Um, but it was, it had to be a valuable one at first uh, when we started the scene because it sets up Sean's desire to only throw records he doesn't like. Um, so it had to be a banger at the top and you don't get much more bangy than Blue Monday. It's a well-known fact that the Batman soundtrack is a mess. <laughs> um, but Sign of the Times and Purple Rain, obviously classic seminal albums. Um, it's one of those things where you, you know, when you love an artist, you, you, you forgive them their sort of lesser works um, and even profess to, to like them. You might even defend them. Um, Edgar Wright will defend the Batman soundtrack, um, but it is strange. Um, and we almost used it again in The World's End, actually. We were going to have Gary King mime the entirety of Bat Dance. That never happened. I remember writing a letter to Mark Knopfler to ask him if we could use the cover art and, and trying to explain to him that we were throwing it because it's a classic, not because it's boring. Um, but we threw that because I'd got given that album to, as, a, as a kid at Christmas. And um, just before I opened it, um, the people who'd bought me the present were like, oh, we, we weren't sure what music you're into. And um, I think Dire Straits came up and I, went, I don't like Dire Straits, they're boring. And then I opened it and it was Brothers in Arms. That was very embarrassing. They laughed. Oh! Um, oh, Stone Roses. Uh, no. Second Coming. I like it. Oh. I do like The Second Coming. I think it's a great album. There are some fantastic tracks on there. Going South, um, um, I'm Begging You. I mean, there's some brilliant tunes on it. I, I didn't quite get the, the sort of slight harumph that that album got. But uh, Edgar, similarly feels like Ed did. So we, that's me and Edgar talking there. Sade, that's Liz's. Yeah, but she did dump you. Hello. I ran into Sade in a lift, an elevator in New York at the Bowery Hotel uh, a few years ago and um, thanked her for letting me throw her brilliant album at a zombie. Um, her name's Helen, actually. And I said, thank you, Helen. They said it was locked. 
And that's that.